He said, let me pray with you. And he began to pray. And another voice came forward. Well, what, what that is is a radical manifestation. It's a spiritual term that I've coined. And, and it's been over 40 years since this happened. And what I have discovered since that time is this, that Jeannie had a stronghold and she had some demonic influence in her life. And it was due to the things and the events in her life that had transpired in her <coughs> life several years before that. Well, I didn't know what to do. And Reverend Myers came over. And we prayed together and we dealt with some of the, the issues demonically and stronghold. But did, we did we came up to a point and it stopped. And we called a man down in Morgan, Morgantown, West Virginia, that I had met, and my wife had met, and he said, Why don't you bring her down to my church on Good Friday? And that was like in two days. And I said, absolutely. Well, she didn't sleep that, that night. I didn't sleep that night. I held her all night. I was afraid. I slept with my Bible underneath my pillow. That's how ignorant I was of these kinds of issues. So when, when my alarm uh, went off and I hadn't been to sleep, I got up and worked a full shift and uh, came home. She didn't sleep that night. I didn't sleep that night. And then that evening, we went to Morgantown, and we met this pastor, who's was Pastor Miller. I don't know where he's at now. He might be retired. And uh, they ministered to him. Then they called it deliverance. Now we call it setting people free. And from that time on, and I won't fill in all the information, she was set free that night. And uh, I told the Lord after that, I said, Lord, I don't ever want anything to do with this ever again in my life. <laughs> I said, this has made my wife even more fearful than before. And so he let me go. He called me to the ministry. He let me go to school for five years he never said a word to me about it in the year that i graduated i was pastoring a small church in a place called moon creek indiana and he began to speak to me about this type of thing i want as many people who are willing to learn about spiritual warfare and the breaking and pulling down strongholds to know as much as they can about this process that is really a spiritual part of our life. The first thing I want to do is be able to teach you everything that I have been taught by God. Everything that I've been taught by God. And then I want to show you how to be discipled into living a life that is repentant before the Lord so that you can experience church or church growth uh, Christian growth marital growth health of your children so that so that you can see Jesus Christ be involved in the spiritual life of all the members of your family if you have grandchildren be involved in them great grandchildren be involved with them this process and this teaching this truth of the Lord Jesus Christ, can radically change the life of any and every human being that uh, can be uh, exposed to. The second thing is I want to train people to minister to this outside of their family. See, it is a natural process for a mother and father who seek Jesus Christ to have the ability to observe in prayer their children and their spouses and realize when they have an issue of a stronghold argument or pretension, which is found in Corinthians, and then deal with it within the family because God gives us spiritual authority within our family to deal with these kind of issues on a daily basis of our life. 
And so your children can grow and mature, and your children can be free of bondage, okay? If you practice this kind of spiritual walk with God. There is not a pattern to it. There are principles that are found in the word of God that teach us how to minister to our family. Okay? And he will show you how it works and with some encouragement and some discipleship outside of your present walk with God, you can become very proficient at living this repentant life as a family and see the healing of God happen within your family. Okay? So the first phase of this will be uh, spiritual warfare classes or breaking down a stronghold. And that will be a 12-week program beginning next week. And you can either Zoom in or you can come and meet with us in this classroom and we will teach you biblical principles on what strongholds are. Strongholds exist in a human being in a couple of different ways. A stronghold, such as alcoholism, I'll use that example. Alcoholism, if it is in your father's family, your grandfather's family, and your great-grandfather's family, it will be a huge temptation to be upon you and your family. And so a stronghold happens through historically, spiritually, passing it on from generation to generation. It's not a psychological issue. It's a spiritual issue that's passed on from generation to generation. The second way that uh, strongholds occur is through events that occur in your family or in your life person. Such if a young lady is molested or abused, or a young man who uh, has a traumatic experience in a car accident, some kind of experience, okay? Or if you're in a marriage situation and your spouse is not Christ-like and not healthy in the relationship, those events can affect a woman who loves Christ. And these events open the door up, the door up in a human being so that a stronghold can't be developed within their life. These strongholds are as a result of sin. You need to understand this. These strongholds are as a result of sin that is not confessed. Okay? If you do not confess the sin or the situation or the event that you're in before the Lord and you don't deal with it, in a biblical, repentant way, then they can produce a stronghold in your life. Resentment, bitterness, which runs rampant in the church today and causes division, are events that occurred to people and they got their feelings hurt and they experienced real pain, but they never dealt with it in a repentant way. They will then hold grudges against other people and those strongholds, because of the authority that sin has in a life, and authority has a capture on you because you didn't repent, then what happens is those authorities seek themselves in us. And it can see itself in our mind, in our emotions, and in our will. And these authorities. Have a, this authority, excuse me, these strongholds have authority because of their sin nature to grow. They just don't set there. For, for an example, um, a disastrous situation can happen and you can be left with memories that are, are very fearful or painful. And if you just push them aside and you forget about them, they will develop a stronghold and they will grow and eventually they will manifest themselves in you as a human being. And they will cause you problems. Anxiety. Anxiety is not an emotional problem. Now, I know that's going to cause some people difficulty. That's okay. Anxiety 
has to do with fear, and fear is a spiritual problem. That, that's just all there is to it. And people who understand the principles of spiritual warfare can pray against the anxiety and what causes the anxiety or the potential of the anxiety. And God will, by his sovereign will, come and transfer those situations in their life. And we're going to teach these principles. There are many principles that need to be taught so that we can understand how the Holy Spirit, by the power of God, transforms people's lives. Okay. That's the first part of it. We could talk more about it. We'll ask for questions in a minute. The second part is there's going to be a second class. And that the first class is from 7 to 8 at the Percival Baptist Church. Right? When I announced it in a church the other day, I called it a different church's name, and they said, no, 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 not that one. It's the Percival Bible Church. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Percival Baptist Church in its room 208. Starts at 7 o'clock. And that'll be next week, okay? Love to see you. The second class is, is the discipleship of how to use this outside of your family. In other words, if you want to minister to a person, if God calls you to help people with strongholds, arguments, pretensions, if he calls you to do that, you will come to this class and I will train you on how to deal with it in depth. And there's a lot of things that, that you need to understand about ministering to people. Uh, I'll teach you how to deal with people who are angry at you. Just because they're mad at you doesn't mean you shouldn't minister to them. You should stay away from them. It may be a ploy of the enemy to keep them from getting the help that they need. I will teach you as a minister of this ministry how to, to, to work on repentance. Because people will do and say things about you that are incorrect or unhealthy, and you will have to repent of it because you have to minister to them in a way to bring them around to transformation and repentance. And if you're angry at them and you have a hit list against them, you will not be able to do that. And we'll talk about that. We'll talk about humility. Let me tell you something. When God began to to let people be free by using me as an instrument of righteousness for Christ. And that's all of you. You're all instruments of righteousness of Jesus Christ dwells within you. But when he begins to use you to set people free from a variety of strongholds, you can have problems with pride and arrogance. You think you're invincible. You know, God's got, he's in my corner and you can't do it. Well, he, you need to be humble. You need to submit yourself to Jesus Christ. And you need to learn how to do that in a biblical way, not in an emotional way, not in a psychological way, not a philosophical way, but in a, in a spiritual way where Jesus Christ is the Lord of your ministry and he's in control of it and you're only a representative for who Jesus Christ is. Because we, that's not trained to a lot of people. people. People then get in trouble. God may use them in a mighty way, and then arrogance of pride sets in. Boom, they got problems. But we want to train people on how to spiritually relate to Jesus Christ as you minister this truth to people around us. Because that is our witness in this issue of minister to other people, that Jesus Christ is really in charge of what's going on here. One of the things we're going to encourage in this second class is we're going to talk about um, how to allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you. Okay, Some of you say, well, he speaks to me now. Okay, but maybe he doesn't. There are a large majority of Christians who get their leading from God through the Holy Scriptures, and nothing wrong with that. Or through a Sunday school teacher, nothing wrong with that. Or maybe good preacher, nothing wrong with that. 
But we, when we're one-on-one people or with a couple, we need to be able to learn how to hear God's voice instantly. Boom, instantly, boom. Why? Because let me share something with you. When people have confidence in what God is doing with you, when they come to you, God will show you many aspects of this person's life that needs to be dealt with. And you need to be able to not only hear God, but understand what God wants you to hear, but also know what God wants you to do with the information he tells you. Okay? I made a mistake one time. He told me about somebody, and and I, I got excited, and I thought, well, maybe I need to tell this person. And that's not what God wanted me to do. He wanted me to pray. And when I told this person, boy, the disaster situation. So there was no one to train me, no one to tell me, tell me what I just told you. And so what it did was it left that that situation unresolvable. And I had to go back and ask God to forgive me for misusing the, the divine, holy information that God gave me for that particular person situation. And I had to repent of that. And then I had to ask him to teach me. So the question I'll ask you, one of the questions is, are you teachable when the Holy Spirit teaches you? Are you teachable? That's something that you need to understand. So we'll talk about that. As the world continues to progress in a negative way. And, and in my opinion, it's, it's getting worse and worse. Uh, and the society in which we live in is right now prone to create an atmosphere within this society so that evil can abound and it, it can be destructive. I'm going to try and work with you to to help you understand the activity of evil, the power and authority of evil, in Jesus' name, not in our power, not in in any kind of power except the power of Christ, so that you can begin to hear from God what is actually going on. There will be people that will come into your life and seek help, and they will tell you it's because their husband doesn't love them or their wife doesn't love them. When God will then say, no, it's because of the way you were raised and the damage that was done to you, which does not allow you to participate in a healthy relationship with your spouse. That's not saying the spouse didn't do anything wrong, but you will try and learn how to let the Holy Spirit tell you what's going on in the situation beyond the presentation of the truth that's told to you. Okay? That takes time. So in this, in this class, we will go through all of that. I will teach you uh, what anointing is. I'll teach you how to anoint people. Uh, I will teach you what authority is. Uh, matter of fact, in both classes, we'll talk about authority. Uh, the second class, we will talk to you about authority and how it functions in other people outside of your family. Um, we'll teach you all there is that I know to teach you about spiritual warfare. Um, then what will happen is if you, after taking this course, feel that you would like to minister to people, then I will put you in a structured program with me and I will see how you are doing and what you're doing and how well you're performing for Christ and how you're helping me. Okay? We'll do that. And um, we'll call you. No, we'll call you. John walked with the phone. <laughs> so, so I will sit in with the people that you find that God leads you to minister to, they'll come to you. When Jesus Christ, be sure, when Jesus Christ knows that you are sincere 
about setting people free. And it's not just some exciting experience to do. He will send people to you. In all the years that I've done ministry, there's always people who will call me and come and say, I need help. Always. Sometimes there's been a whole bunch of people. Sometimes there has been a few people. But, but when God calls you, he will then teach you what you need. He'll qualify. God will call. Not me. Not an academic series of lessons. Not, not intellectual prowess. But spiritual development of his nature in you for this particular ministry. Then we will, I'll teach you how to pray for the people. And what that entails, there's some different things about that. Uh, anointing. And then the, the second part of that second class, which is really the third part. The first part is the education. Second is the practical application. And the third is how to disciple somebody. Now, let me share with you something. When you seek the Lord out, to have him give you victory over strongholds, arguments, pretensions. When you seek him out and somebody ministers the truth of God to you and the Lord Jesus Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit sets you free. When Jesus does that, the stronghold is broken. It no longer has an effect on you. But what is left behind in a residual effect is all the training you live under the influence of that stronghold all of your life. And you will need to learn how to teach people how to walk with Christ after that. And that discipleship program is as important, if not more important, and setting people from strongholds. Why do I say that? Because in, in the Gospels, when Jesus is talking about Beelzebub and he sets this man free, he says they left. The man did not fill himself with the Holy Spirit and they came back seven times and the worse was the second state from the first state. And so the discipleship part of it is essential. So if we are responsible to minister to people who have strongholds in their life, or any de demonic influence, and we do not teach them how to grow in Christ and how to live a victorious life as he transforms them from the way they were to what Jesus wants, then we are letting our responsibility come to nothing. Okay? So that that's basically an understanding. Um, and then... There'll be conferences. We'll hold conferences here, there, and everywhere. We don't know where that's going to be yet. There'll be conferences for men. There'll be conferences for women. I know one, one conference for women are going to be held in New Jersey. What's the name of that place? Ocean Groves. Ocean Groves, New Jersey. Beautiful, Christian, godly location right on the beach. And there'll be a conference up there. There'll be information that will come out as soon as they get the dates. The dates are set but all the information will be out so you ladies can see that. We're working on some other conferences yet, but I don't know the, enough information. Um, so that's what I think God wants me to teach. And uh, I'll, 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 I'll take questions from anybody because this only took me a half an hour. So, Oh, don't be afraid to ask. Anybody on the screen that has a question? Sarah. Sarah, I did. I, yeah, I did, but I've forgotten it because I was then listening and I forgot to write it down. <laughs> so it'll you'll have to wait. And <laughs> my brain's a bit sleepy still. So uh, Lord, Lord allow Sarah to remember her question. <laughs> Oh, I'm sure I'll come back with a few. So give me a second. Okay. One question for Sarah. Oh. Are, are you going to want to be involved in both classes? No, nah, that's what something I was, um, I suppose that is a question for me. Um, 
in theory, I would like to say yes. Um, but I don't know how that will work logistically and um, whether it's something that you're wanting to do um, <laughs> and whether I'd be able to keep up with both of them because that would be two hours. Um, it's they're, they're, they're heavy enough, you know. Um, but yes, I'm going to say potentially yes by the sound of them. I would if, if John, if you and Pastor Mike are willing to keep me on. Yeah, because we, we just weren't, we weren't going to do Zoom, but we'll do Zoom for you. Mm-hmm. But not open it up, just because I think there's more of a need to be here live for anybody that can be here live for the second part, right? This is what we've talked about. Yeah, you see, so that's what I was, I suppose that's what I was wondering myself. Would I be able to be involved in the second one, or is it something that is needing to be one on more, like to be participating in the room, which I obviously I can't do? Mike's thinking. Do you hear anything? You so, yeah. Back and forth. Any, peop- any people that are on the West Coast or outside of the country or up north and they can't make the trip down here, uh, they can contact um, Kathy and uh, somehow we'll put a number available in an email or something. And, and, uh, if they're in the right location distance-wise, then we will consider um, talking to those people and seeing if they are able to benefit from the second class, okay? We'll see that. Um, but the first class will be on Zoom, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, then that's a start, I suppose, for me. And then we'll move forward from that. I already, I already have... Three people from Clark County that are going to drive down here on Tuesday for the second class. And then we have some other people from this class I just finished. For those of you who don't know, I just finished a 12-week course on the first one. And we're, we're going to go back over. And there are some people from that class that want to attend the second class. Hey, Mike. Yes, sir. Yeah. Pastor Mike, this is Dave. Hi, Dave. Hey, um, I met you that first night when you started that 12-week class, and I just it was just hard for my schedule. But I'm hoping to come and be there in person, you know, for the rest of these. Are you? Is this, or maybe this is a John question? How how long? How many weeks are we planning for this one? Twelve weeks. Twelve weeks. Okay. So um, I don't I don't know a lot about spiritual warfare um i i mean i've been more interested recently in the 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 spiritual uh uh aspect of my relationship with christ because for me it seems like that would make it you know more real to me more uh more tangible um and you know when we talk about following christ you know, I, I'm I'm a guy who does. You know, I you know I read the scripture. I, I I I try to get into it every morning. I journal, um, and I I do sense. I do get a sense of direction, sort of almost on a daily basis from that. You know, I I can't say that it necessarily sticks with me all day. Uh, you know, true confession. Um, but I I mean I see this class hopefully and maybe you can tell me if this makes sense or if i'm going in the right direction but as a way for me to get closer to to him to hear his voice to you know kind of as you described i i mean i have friends who talk to me about something jesus told them god shared with them that the holy spirit shared with them that you know like it's it's, it's if they were sitting down having coffee with them you know, like, you know, just very specific, very, uh, you know, very, I don't know, visceral, very, uh, you, you know, very, very, very tangible, understandable, like, like, like what you described, like you had a voice in the backseat of the car. So, I mean, just, just, I mean, I would like to get work towards that. I've had those sort of moments a little bit, 
you know, but I, I would, I, I would love for this to be something where, you know, I'm understanding the spiritual aspects of, of God and, 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 and tapping into that and communicating with that and just, you know, hearing from him as part of what this can is. I, can I share something to give you a little encouragement and hope? Yeah, please. Strongholds actually resist the truth of God and prevent us from growing in a healthy way. And we, uh, the enemy will let us know Christ, but then we'll use the strongholds to prevent us from maturing in Christ. Amen. And so the more you learn about these strongholds, mm -hmm. the clearer you can see God and hear his word, and transformation becomes much better. Into the image of Christ. So, Dave, that's an excellent reason. Right. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Welcome. I'm excited about it. Bring your friends. <laughs> <laughs> if I have, if I had friends, I would certainly bring them. <laughs> <laughs> the only one you have is already in the room. Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> I just pretend to be giant sometimes. That's all. <laughs> okay. Mark, have you done something similar to the second class before? And if so, do you have any stories of how people have been able to implement what you have taught them in this area? Mark, since you said that, and we did not prompt these questions, so much, <laughs> but since you said that, Mark, I have trained three pastors in this. And I just, I, I'm in the middle towards the end of training a younger, well, he's younger than me, he's 50, uh, in, in this second application of this truth. And um, the, the first gentleman has been using it in spiritual, biblical counseling for probably 25 or 30 years. The second one has just started, and he is counseling with his first couple, and we won't explain their situation, but he is having victory. He, The Lord set a lady free from fear, but that's only the beginning of the ministry there, and we're working on that, all right? And you asked me a question about what was the second half? Just any stories about how people that you've trained have been able to, to implement? This? Yes, these, these, both these men are using it, and the first gentleman has a lot of success. There's the third man that I train uh, lives up in Hylersburg, Pennsylvania. I mean, these aren't great metropolitan areas, you know, and uh, he has ministered to, to people and he has. Help Christ has used him to help people be free of things like anxiety, fear, depression, those kind of things. But he had two situations that he had to deal with that were much beyond his yet um, his knowledge. And he called me in, and both of them. The one lady was she. Matter of fact, she told me after we prayed for her that she didn't realize how sweet Jesus Christ was until after we prayed with him. The other man we're, we're just now ministering to, and he has a severe difficult situation with an issue in his life spiritually. And I don't want to go into that, but but he wants to come back after after this pastor brought him and he, he sat there and listened to what I say to him. He says, you taught me so much more by just hearing, hearing me talk to them. And he says, I I now understand that my questions are parochial and not and not spiritually motivated. And so yes, there people do learn, even though I'm teaching them more. <laughs> they, really it's the Holy Spirit teaching them. Right? But that's a that's, you always ask good questions. <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> So if somebody has, or if somebody has, you say everybody has authority over their family, 
if they develop if they develop it so that's class one but if they have a really deep a call issue though would they want to go to the second one to get more even if they didn't want it do I, this outside i would say yes but if they have a deep issue they're struggling with uh -huh. they need to come to talk to somebody one to one okay, okay? because that's when, when I sat down with the second people in the second class, one of the things we're going to talk about is how to ask the right questions. Mm -hmm. See, in your spiritual life, in your praying, if things aren't moving, guess what? It's not that God doesn't want to move. It's that you're not asking the right questions. And so God has to lead you in your personal prayer life to say, God, what do I? what's going on here? How do I need to change it? So, yes, you can learn from that second class how to ask the right questions. But if you have a real problem that you need to you need to deal with, um, you need to come to the so. Now, let, let me share something else with you. You cannot take this class and deal with homosexuality on your own. You understand? You need to have somebody... Restore you, as it says in Scripture, gently. Okay, you need that that help because there is a spiritual accountability in the authority of Christ when you're dealing with something that is as damaging as something like homosexuality, or alcoholism, or adult, or what they call the seven deadly sins. Because that 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 stronghold inside of you is so powerful that it changes the way you think and feel. It changes the way your your will is, and uh, you need help to recognize that. Good question. Another good question. Someone else. So I have a question. So the first. First hour, the first class, is that what we just, is this kind of basically what we just did? Basically, just, but it will, there will be differences. There were things I never even taught. Right. There were things I never even taught about. So, should we do both of them? Ask the Lord what you're supposed to do, mm -hmm. okay? I mean, I'm, I, it sounds like a commercial if I say you need to do both. That wouldn't be right. <laughs> no one should do both. Okay. Do, do I think both would be beneficial? Sure. The other question I you mentioned conferences. What do you see those? What's that? What do you see the conferences looking like? Hmm. Well, no, I saw what I see. It's what happens. Um, my daughter, Brianna, which you heard in her speak, and I have done a spiritual warfare conference. And during the conference, we taught basic fundamental issues on spiritual warfare, which can be found in the first one. But there is an atmosphere created through prayer and uh, seeking of the Lord that there were people who never came forward for prayer that were healed of things. So I don't know what you mean by what do it look like. There will be people that will come forward with prayer and be set free from depression, Anxiety, unforgiveness, bitterness, um, witchcraft. I, I was in a conference here last fall, and there was 20% of the ladies that attended that were involved in witchcraft one way or another. And they all said that they they gained a great deal of spiritual freedom as we, we broke the relationship and covenant that's made with witchcraft and reaffirm their relationship with Jesus Christ. So that can go on. Um, a simple thing, I had a 17 year old boy come up to me and confess to me that he'd been lying to his parents. And so we prayed for forgiveness and we took authority over lying and uh, he went off, told his parents the truth. So those are the kinds of things. That we're doing. Uh, there is also very minimal individual brief you know one hour you don't solve a person's life but there is a brief uh you can be exposed to some counseling on a one-to-one -one bank uh behalf of the, the word just went out 
Now, I don't let anybody come to me during a conference that has already met with me or is meeting with me for further counseling. It's only for new people that come to the conference. So that's kind of, we eat and we sleep there. Talk about the fact that not everybody that does a second class is going to be gifted to go out and do this. Well, first of all, this kind of ministry you must be called for. Okay. Now, you may not know whether or not God is calling you, and you may want to explore what's going on before you can clearly hear whether God is calling you. That's an important thing. You will still be equipped, but God may not use you in a ministry kind of way. Okay. And, and there are requirements for this ministry. The very first requirement is you must be born again. Jesus Christ must be your Lord and Savior. And you must live a repentant life. A repentant life is a person who hears from God that there is an issue in their life they need to repent of. And then you must agree with God that what he said about you is true. And then you must ask for forgiveness and then ask God to transform you and fill you with his Holy Spirit. You must live this life daily. <coughs> or you will not be effective in this ministry. And the third thing is, you must have the gift of discernment. And uh, knowing the difference of which the demon is running around or stronghold. Okay? I forget what it's called. I use it all the time, but it's still what it's called. <laughs> That's important because when a person opens their heart up to you, they're really opening their heart up to God. And you need to be in touch with God through this gifting to be able to know just exactly what's going on, why it's going on, and how to pray for that person. Now, that you can have this gifting and not develop it. You understand? And so over time, it will need to be developed by God. But without it, you will only be using psychological principles to help a person. And those do not set people free. Psychology is basically, I'm going to get in trouble for saying this, it's basically behavior modification or drug therapy. This is a ministry that sets people free from things like OCD. Did I get it right? OCD. Um, we've, we've seen a lady set free from that completely. She doesn't take any medicine. She was on $1,600 worth a month back in the 1980s. So she was free from that. Um, drunkenness, uh, four generations family. Uh, I led this man and his wife to the Lord, and he drank all the time. And uh, he gave his life to Christ, and he still drank. And so God showed me the history of the family, how it worked, and what needed to be prayed for in this man in way of strongholds and sins of the forefathers. And he just quit drinking. God, God gave him the grace and mercy to heal him from the sin of drunkenness. And so not alcoholism. That's a psychological term. It's a sin of drunkenness, the sin of adultery, not having an affair. You know, drug addiction is self-abuse. Okay, and so you deal, with, you you understand exactly the spiritual aspect of what you're dealing with and how to apply the truth to the problem so Christ can set people free. That, did you ask that question? Is that good enough? Once some more. No, just kidding. I'm, I'm actually being recorded, aren't I, Dave? So I just <laughs> I reply. Other questions? So if someone um, objects to that question. Yes. Um, the, in the 12, 12 week cycle, um, are you, if, if, our, if we're already uh, aware that we're going to be out of town at some point during those next 12 weeks, for that second class, is it something you would record, or how would you how would we deal with that? Let us get back with you. We, we haven't discussed that. 
Okay. That's an excellent question. Somebody write it down so we can talk about it. Okay, thank you. Was that you, Steve? Yeah. Yeah. That was Jeff. Jeff, are you back from Tennessee? I'm back from Tennessee. We had the wedding. Everything was wonderful. And uh, we made it back yesterday. I evening. want to know how the singing went. The singing went great. We, uh, our niece is uh, an, an excellent pianist, and she uh, she led us well on the keyboard, and she played the organ as well. And uh, but our the songs we did one hymn, "Abide with Me," and then we also did the other the other piece, uh, "Say You Love Me," the Andrew Lloyd Webber. So um, they were both they both went really well. And my wife and I sang both of them. Now in my life. Jeff just spoke a ton. <laughs> but thank you, Jeff, for being there. Yeah. <laughs> someone else. You were right. Yeah. So if someone hasn't taken the first class yet and they're interested also in the second one, they would take them from the first Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. I have I have I have a young man that's coming to the second class and I have taught him the first class over two years of meeting with him every every day. And that's because he was on patrol for, uh, what is it when you go to parole? He was on parole for a federal offense. And God transformed this young man's life. And now he's going to come to the second because he wants to minister to other people. And I have told him he needs to be praying for the gift of interpretation, not interpretation. The sermon. Mark, thank you. The sermon. <laughs> and, uh, and so it's not a problem. It's not a problem. Someone else? You want to touch on uh, Sarah had a question. Hi, sorry, to me again. Um, for those of us who've already done the court classes with you, um, um, Dave and, and Sunnis, um, would it be good for us to go back and redo the tw first 12 week course again? Is it going to be similar or is it going to be, it would it be good retraining, put it that way? There, the ministry of the pulling down of strongholds, arguments, and pretensions, the ministry is so diverse that there are basic fundamental things that I, I taught in the first 12 weeks. But if you ever are around me, and you'll notice I could teach on the same thing, and it won't even sound like the first time. So it would be beneficial because you get more, more truth that God has shown us, and uh, it would be beneficial. But I don't want to sound like a commercial. If you think you got enough, that's fine. You understand what I'm saying? No, I personally t thought it would do me the benefit. It'd be more beneficial for me to do it again, but I didn't. I, I, I was just checking. There, there is no restriction if you want to take it five times. Okay. It, yeah. it, it depends on what God wants you to do. Okay, Sarah. Yeah. No, I know that. No, I will be praying on it. Yeah. I do. Okay. Can you do a commercial for one? One one council. The way that I learned this ministry was one-on-one -on -one counsel. Um, I started out with people who had nagging headaches, bad dreams, depression, fear, anxiety, and moved on from there. And uh, I have I've had the privilege of leading two women out of witchcraft that were active practicing women who were in a relationship with Satan and they wanted free from it for reasons that we won't discuss. And, and so they've been, it just moves on from there. And I, with the change of the society, there are more and more different things that we have to deal with almost monthly now, okay? You come and you sit down, and I begin to uh, talk to you about how I can help you. And you begin to tell me your story. 
And in the midst of you telling me a story, I will say, excuse me, or I interrupt you. You all know about that. And then I'll ask you a question that will lead you in another direction where God wants to minister to you in that area. And we will go through a period of time where we are discovering the strongholds that God has shown us. He, he will do it with you and me both. And, I'll, and you'll see how that happens. And then we will make a list during that period, the same period of time, of people that you need to forgive. And, and you need to understand that, that when you're with me, I will explain to you that forgiveness is an act of the will in obedience to the death and resurrection of Christ. He said, forgive one another, even as I have forgiven you. And we will make that list. And then during this whole process, up here at the top, I have sins of the forefathers. For example, there are, there are families in this one particular church I pastor that every young couple under the age of 25 had to get married. And they were beginning to have children, and they wanted to know, would their behavior of sin during the time they were courting or dating have an effect on the children? And I said, yes. And so that's a sin of the forefathers that is visited upon the third and fourth generation. That scripture comes from Deuteronomy chapter 5, uh, 9, I'm 5, 5, where it's listing the uh, Ten Commandments. And then it says, it talks about the sins of the forefathers. And so we'll make that, that list together, and then we will pray through that list. And we will, by the authority of the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and only his authority, break the power of these strongholds, these curses, spells, the occult, and forgive these people. And then we will pray for you. And then we will anoint you with oil. And I usually anoint people three times. And I'll explain in the second class why I do it that way. And uh, then uh, we'll go from there. We'll move in to uh, helping you overcome the habits you've learned due to the presence of strongholds. And, and see a transformation. Does that sound okay? Any questions about that? Somebody wants to know how long they're listed. I, everybody comes to me and says, oh, that looks long. And I said, you think that's long? I had one that was 12 pages long. So there was a lot of damage in that situation, a lot of strong, a lot of severe events that occurred. There is nothing, <coughs> there is nothing you cannot tell me as of yet in my life that I would be surprised about. I mean, think, think of the worst thing you can think of. It's amazing. It's amazing that God gives you peace about it. And you've got to be at peace. If you get shocked because somebody tells you something, they're going to lose faith in your ministry. You see what I'm saying? Occult worship, just an extra 50 cents. Occult worship, I'm, I'm over time. Occult worship is multifaceted. There is Indian occult worship. There is satanic occult worship. There is Eastern occult worship. There is Hindu occult worship. There's many multiple ways that an occultic covenant can be made on your behalf. You may have never made it. And so it needs to, you need to be able to ask the Lord to show you how to do that. That's something we'll talk about in a second. That was too commercial. Was that is there any other question? Because we should be done so you all can go home. We're going to close the door. We're going to show <laughs> What about, um, does anybody have any questions about who they should invite or? You know, your aunt, your room. uncle, your brother, your sister, your cousin, the people you don't like, the people that need help. And I, it doesn't matter. Okay. 
Nobody asked me if I've ever ministered to unsaved people. Yes, I did. Jesus did in the New Testament. John hasn't done that. Yet. <laughs> <laughs> We're talk we've talked about the website. We, we have 40 ladies coming to Kathy's house Saturday. Kathy's All under 40? <laughs> hey, hold. Oh, I'm glad you heard that. Let's pray. Father God, I just ask that you fill these people that are in the Zoom world and fill the people here with your Holy Spirit, that you bless them, guide them, direct them. Lord, um, as they seek you about coming, I pray, Lord, that you will lead them and direct them and that you will be with me as I teach these classes to your glory and honor and so that people can Know how good it is to know the Lord and live in the abundant life of Christ. In Jesus. Thank you all. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you.